Jimmy, you're in your RODI room. I'm in my fish room with my RODI mixing bed and all. It's like the, the, the RODI powwow. Yeah, cool. <laughs> you're like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like only fish geeks are into this stuff. They're like, ooh, RODI unit, mixing vat. Seriously, dude, th this is my laundry room. If I flip the camera around, my camera's sitting on top of my washing machine, so I don't have a fish room. That's okay. Like, you're still excited that you have a mixing station. You're happy about that, right? Or you should be. Yeah, of course, it's awesome. And, uh, you know, I've eliminated rolling my uh, RODI bucket down to fill up my uh, auto top off now that I'm just carrying a jug. So that's a sweet uh, addition I've made recently. But yeah, it's uh, going going good. Except um, I have some questions about this guy. So um, he always asks me what my T, what is this thing called? TDS? The water going in is at about 100. Um, after the membrane is about 46, 48. And uh, clean coming out is ar around 40. Uh, okay, let's break those numbers down. First one is the TDS of the water coming into your unit. That's basically how clean your tap water is. Around 100, that's a really good number. That's about what I am. Now I've seen it as low as like 20 in some places and then I've seen it as high as like 800 for people who have really dirty hard water. So 100 is not bad. That's gonna help your RODI units, the membranes and the filters in there last longer. Now the 40-ish numbers after the RO membrane and after the DI stage, that tells me your RO membrane is shot and your DI stage is shot. That should have been replaced a long time ago, but look, this is a newbie show. You didn't know what you didn't know. Let's talk about that and why you need to replace them. Now, a lot of times the RODI unit it gets forgot about. Like it's in your laundry room, mine's underneath my sink, like mine's out of sight, out of mind. And a lot of times we don't think to go check it until we're dealing with a tank issue like algae problems and we like tried everything and then we're like, oh, maybe it's the RODI unit. So one of the things we want to talk about is preventative maintenance so that we don't have tank issues that we then have to hopefully trace back to the RODI. We want to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, okay. I've never changed any of these units in them, but I've noticed maybe a little color change because they're kind of clear. Yeah, so what should it be coming out? So coming out after the RO membranes, usually under 10 is where I'm happy. Coming out after the DI stage, one or zero. Oh, okay. When the DI starts to change, that can be an, an indication that it's starting to exhaust. It's not doing its job anymore. The TDS meter is gonna tell you that. The other way to look at this is you get an idea of how fast those things exhaust. Now there's some give and take here. If you have really dirty water, your membrane and your filters are likely gonna exhaust faster. Or if you're making a lot of water. In your case, we filled your tank, you're doing some fairly frequent top-offs. So that can exhaust the filters faster because they're getting used. There's one way to do this is like, every year you pull your RO membrane and then every six months you replace your sediment and your carbon and your DI stages on your unit. Now. There's some give and take here. If you have really clean water and you're not making a lot of water, you may not have to do it that often. If you have really dirty water or you're, not, or you're making a lot of water, like some combination of that, then you might need to do it more often. So this is why I like that the TDS unit is, the TDS meter is built into our unit there, our saltwateraquarium.com unit, because you can start to watch it. You get an idea of this is about how much water I make and this is about how long it lasts. And then I like to get ahead of the game. And let's say it lasts every, every six months a shot every five months, just go ahead and replace the filters. Just be preventative about it. That way we can try to prevent something going wrong with your tank, like algae issues, because we're putting dirtier water into our tank. All right, Mark, so I shared with you my TDS numbers. You said they're shot. So I guess I need to get new ones, or what do I need to do? Yeah, super simple to change. You're gonna get a sediment filter, a carbon filter, a DI stage, and at this point, it's not gonna hurt for you to go ahead and change your RO membrane. Probably a little premature with your unit. It's only about a year old. You haven't made that much water, but look, they're not that expensive. Just go ahead and pull them. 
it's a lot more expensive to chase an issue down the tank if the RO membrane is shot and you haven't done anything about it. So we're gonna replace three things, very, very easy. Your RODI unit came with an RO filter wrench. It's a white thing, looks like an oil filter wrench kind of thing. You got yours, I got mine, this is it. Very simple, make sure your RODI unit is off before you do this. And then you just open up, use the wrench, open up the canister. Now it's gonna be full of water, so you're gonna open it and then you can spin it off by hand. Just make sure you hold it up and then dump the water out that's in there. Take the filter out, throw that filter away, put a new one in and then spin it back on. All right, it sounds like things I can do. Okay, so the last piece of changing your filters is, it's a good idea once you change your filters, take the output of the RODI unit and put it out in the yard, put it in the sink. Don't let that water go into your vat because that's gonna be dirtier water as the filters are flushing out the fines and stuff with them. Run it for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, let that water clear out so that we're not putting dirty water into your RO holding vat. All right, that's easy enough because I made a little shutoff valve where I can just turn it and pull it out and empty it right into the sink right there. Have you ever considered a career in RODI system and mixing station design? Well, you know, I used to study cooling of naval submarine reactors, so I could probably figure it out. That's a true story. Besides your RODI unit, Jimmy, there's some other good preventative maintenance things that you could do around your mixing station, which is one, clean the mixing pump because the mixing pump, it's really got a dirty job. It's ingesting salt, it's ingesting those crystals, that can cause the impeller to gum up. So I like to take that apart once a year, every six months, clean the impeller, get it cleaned up so that it works really well for me. It stinks when you wanna make water and then your mixing pump is seized up and you gotta take it apart. It's funny you should say that because uh, this guy here, I used pump clean on it today. I just, I just did that, look at how clean it is. And I even, I even took this off. It's funny you should say that because I just did it. I took it out of uh, my salt water bin and um, there was a little bit of salt water residue on the side of the inside here. But I typically uh, clean this out every time I do a water change because I'll empty it. Then I'll take it out in my driveway, spray it down sometimes with the pressure washer, just with clean water, wipe it down. And then I take the RODI water, fill it up and make salt water right away. So I clean it every, every time. You clean your salt mixing vat every time you make water. Yeah, because it only takes a couple more minutes because I typically empty it. So I'm like, well, why not? Just clean it, clean it, wipe it down, spray it down. I'll just do this and clean it every time. Yeah, um, this is what mine looks like, Jimmy. Oh, dude, you need to clean that thing. Yes, I know. That looks pretty dirty, dude. Why am I taking advice from you? Uh, because part of this is, look, I've learned stuff and I don't always do stuff. So it's good that we're talking about this so I can follow my own advice. And I know I should do that. You're already doing it. You're ahead of the game. So you're not making my mistakes. Yeah, mine's, mine's super easy to do this. So I do it every time. So more, more proof in the pudding there, Jimmy. If it's easy to do maintenance on something, you're going to do it. You do it every time because you said it's, it's super simple. Mine's more complicated. I haven't done it. So as you're thinking, if so that you're watching, you're thinking about planning out your systems, if something is easy to clean, you're more likely to do it. That goes down to even like how hard it is to get underneath your tank. Maybe you can get a taller stand or put the tank somewhere that it's easier for you to clean certain components on your tank or your mixing station. If it's easy, you're more likely to do the maintenance.